Hi, I'm Dr. Joshua Iyer, and this is the uh, fifth uh, entry in the Let's Talk series, Coping with Pandemic. Today's topic is emotional expression and technology. And you'll notice that everything looks different. Uh, we forgot to record at the beginning, so I'm recreating the first few minutes of the slide. You'll notice when everybody else joins in. So there's information about me. I am a researcher in integrated behavioral health, opioid treatment, LGBTQA health, and I'm an assistant professor in the Capstone College of Nursing. And today joining me, I have Carly Downs, an assistant professor and clinical director of human development and family studies at the University of Alabama. And she's also the director of the Marriage and Family Therapy Clinic and a licensed marriage and family therapist in Alabama who specializes in working with anxiety, depression, and addictions. I also have with me Megan Bennett, who's the Director of Customer Relations for the Office of Information Technology at the University of Alabama. She's part of the leadership team and tasked with strategic planning, customer relations, and OIT communications, and she has two degrees from the University of Alabama. So uh, today, today we're going to be talking about, sorry, same call. Today we're going to be talking about uh, some new symptoms that CDC has published for COVID-19. Uh, and then we'll be talking about working from home and then communication, Zoom etiquette. Carly's got some tips for us about managing uh, technology and emotional connection. And then we'll do questions and answers. So update. The CDC just published some new guidelines and I think uh, this is a good venue to share with you information as it changes. Um, before now, we've had fever, cough, and shortness of breath as the three main symptoms of COVID-19, especially shortness of breath, which is pretty distinctive to COVID-19. Uh, it distinguishes it from cold uh, and flu and allen cases. The CDC has added now chills, repeated shaking with chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, and a new loss of your sense of taste and smell. And people have had head injuries can lose that, but this uh, seems to be a pretty distinctive symptom that people are reporting. So if you have any of those symptoms, then you should go see your doctor. And if you know anyone who starts reporting these types of symptoms, you should tell them from very far away to go see their doctor. So today's topic is emotional expression and technology. So first I thought I'd start with some benefits of working from home. Things have changed so much for us all and uh, we're, we're aware of many of the challenges, but we don't maybe spend as much time thinking about how great some of these is. So the first one is no more stressful commutes. Instead of, instead of spending 30 minutes in a car, sitting in traffic, waiting behind a train, walking into a building in whatever conditions are out there, we just move from the kitchen to the living room or wherever else it is that we have our meetings and do our work. Um, and that's really awesome for us as it decreases stress, but also decreases the amount of time we spend sort of in wasted time traveling around. The second is that we tend to have a more balanced home life. Uh, we are able now to say, well, that 30 minutes, I want to go take a walk with my daughter and, you know, enjoy taking a walk with my daughter and then I'll come back and I'll just work till 530. So that flexibility has actually allowed us to make more time for our family and end up with a more balanced home life than we might have had before when we had to be, you know, at work, on campus, far away from home. Another thing is that uh, we now have more time in the mornings and the evenings to, because we're not commuting, to cook healthier meals. And we're also not able to go out as much or go to the store as much. So we're, we're, we're spending more time in general making healthier meals and enjoying eating healthier. At least it's one of the benefits. Um, and then also easier exercising. You know, in the past, if you'd wanted to go exercise, you might have had to drive 15 minutes to the gym and 15 minutes back. So you only had 30 minutes that you had to get in during the lunch hour. Now you can just throw on your running shoes and head out the door to get a run in or whatever else you do for exercise. It's easier to work it in and to, to figure out in your schedule how to get it in. All really important benefits of working from home. I'm outside, as you can probably tell, and so uh, some of the birds are yelling at me. If that happens, then I'm sorry. <laughs> so some of the challenges of working from home are things that you know. 
The first of these is obviously technical difficulties. There were all sorts of challenges that we had getting up and running, learning Zoom, making sure we had a computer at home that could you know, run the things that we needed to be able to work. Um, and then also dealing with distractions. So if you have like a family member in the kitchen burning something, it's very hard to stay in your Zoom meeting or finish up that document that needs to be done at two o'clock. So there are lots of distractions outside of our work now that are important to us and present. Another one is uh, work-life imbalance. So some of us are struggling now since we don't have that hard start and stop time at work with having work encroach on the rest of our lives. So from waking up to going to sleep, we always have work on our brain and we're always like thinking about working and that's not good for us and uh, may actually be causing us to spend more time working than we were before. So uh, another one is disruption of our health behaviors. I just talked about how it could possibly make us healthier, but it can also make us unhealthier. And I ran across this phrase that I think is hilarious, but we, we, can, uh, we run the risk of eating at snack o'clock, which is basically just eating all day long because we have food right at hand and eating is a type of coping. Um, also exercising, we are, because our schedules are all thrown off, um, in the face by a leaf, hazards of working outdoors. Um, because we are, uh, we have schedules that we get into with exercising, this might actually throw our exercising off. If we like to go to the gym and work out, for example, that's not a possibility now. We may not have weights at home. So our exercise can get thrown off. Our sleeping can also get thrown off uh, without that hard wake up time in order to get to work. Some people might find that they stay up later and get up later and uh, have more disruptions in sleep. The last three of these are the most important, and these are the ones that we're going to be talking about more today. First of those is isolation or loneliness. A lot of us are spending a lot of time at home now and not getting out and doing the things that we used to do, even if that's seeing coworkers and chatting at the water cooler, but in addition to that, hanging out with our friends. Uh, the second one of those is difficulty team building. Because we're doing all of our communication this way through video conferencing or email or texting or uh, phone calls, uh, it's a little bit harder to build that team feeling that is free to core that sort of brings us together and helps us work towards a common challenge. And then the last of those is digital miscommunication. And that's that when we're using these mediated forms of communication, it's a lot harder to know that we're communicating what we want or that it's having the effect that we expect in people. And also it's a lot harder to understand exactly what it is that people mean when they're talking to us. We're gonna talk more about some of those things and how to deal with those challenges. So here are some examples from one of the articles down there, which I thought that was uh, links at the bottom, that I thought helped get at this. First is you can't, in an email or text, get a sense of a client's appreciation, approbation, approval, or other feelings on job performance, she said. And so that gets at this idea of without all of these like ways that people communicate that we're doing a good job or not doing a good job, it can be difficult to know by words alone. And the next one, the thing that I'm always worried about is if my tone is coming across accurately. When communicating with colleagues in person, my approach is always positive and lighthearted. However, when I'm simply typing a quick message, I wonder if I sound too domineering or brash. And this is actually something that resonated with me because I tend to like to keep things light and make little side jokes a lot. And in email and other forms of communication, that can be confusing. And I tend to use smileys and emoticons and things like that that I'm not gonna talk about today but those help in written communication to signal that you're being lighthearted. It's still a lot harder to get across the messages you want and sometimes they don't play like you expect them to. So those are challenges of miscommunication. This is one of the big important points that I try to get across to people. Uh, the words we say have meaning and that meaning in those words is only a small portion of all of the ways we communicate. The estimates are seven to nine, 70 to 93 percent of communication is actually nonverbal, and that includes vocal tone. Okay, okay, okay. 
the tone we use can change the meaning of the words. The second one is nervous activity or fidgeting. Somebody's sitting there and they're just like, right? Like they're communicating to you and fidgeting is showing their, their nervous energy or their irritation or whatever it is. The third one is facial expressions. Different facial expressions communicate different things. So a range of emotions there, I hope. So different facial expressions communicate. And uh, we should try to be aware of what we're expressing with our face, what we're communicating. The fourth of these is head movements. Right, there are different things that we do when we move our head that actually communicate. Another one is hand gestures, which I've already been doing some of, like, oh, they're pointing the finger, right? That's a bad one. So uh, hand gestures also communicate a lot, even if we're not talking. Um, the sixth of these is body posture. If somebody leans way back, they're disengaged. If they lean way forward, they tend to be engaged. If they're just like lazing around, they're casual. And if they're sitting upright, they're, you know, treating this formally. So body posture can also communicate. And then the final of these is distance. So being really close can be intimidating or it can be showing interest or it can mean that I you know, have trouble hearing. Leaning way back can be disengagement, showing that I'm not really sure about this or that I wish I wasn't here and then I was somewhere else. So distance is also a type of communication. And the goal in talking about these and understanding these is that we want to bring together all of our forms of communication so they're all congruent. So that we're giving very simple, straightforward messages to the person we're communicating with, the words and all of the nonverbals as well, all lining up. That's a train. <laughs> so uh, many of you have probably heard about iMessages. iMessages are ways of communicating where you focus on what your experience is and avoid you sentences which can be accusing and put the other person at disease. So uh, the problem with iMessages is when you have an explicit hierarchy, there's, uh, those messages can actually be coercive or manipulative. Because what ends up happening is you can easily give your employees or your coworkers the sense that your emotions are their responsibility, that they need to be concerned about your emotional state. And that is literally emotional manipulation and not the way workplaces are supposed to work. So instead you wanna figure out how to craft your messages so that they're about tasks getting done or workplace environments being more conducive to work or in this case, Zoom being more conducive to working or whatever it is. So I wanted to go through these because this is the approach that gets you there while sidestepping manipulation. The first is to learn to observe better. To be better communicators, we have to focus on the facts before we begin assigning meaning or judgment to them. So this is that information gathering period before you make a decision about whether it's good or bad or how you feel about it, you just gather more information. The second of these is feelings. To be better communicators, we have to be honest about our feelings without being judgmental or evaluating others in response to them. So figuring out how you feel about something, what the effect of something was on you without pushing your feelings on somebody else as if your feelings are their responsibility. You actually have to own your own feelings. And Carly's gonna talk about feelings and needs a little bit later. Needs is the next one, to be better communicators. It's helpful to understand that all feelings are expressions of needs that aren't being fulfilled. And so we have to understand what our needs are and we have to be able to put in words what that need is and then leading directly to the next thing, which is a request. West. To be better communicators, it's important that we speak about our feelings and our needs in terms of requests rather than demands. Um, and this is why it's dangerous when you are in a position of authority over somebody. If you characterize your needs or your feelings as demands, that actually can play to that person who's disempowered related to you as a demand, as an order, as something that they can't come back and talk to you about or discuss. 
And so we, we really need to couch these as requests, as I'm asking this of you. And again, you need to stay away from like the, the thing you're asking about is that you want another person to alter your feelings. You want to alter the situation that's intermediate, whatever it is that's happening. And you should always be endeavoring to figure out how that change is going to be beneficial to both people. There's a lot more on that. You can look up, uh, look up iMessages too to find out more about how to couch those kinds of statements. So the next part, tips on Zoom for nonverbals. I think this is where we picked up in the uh, video. So I will stop now and we'll cut over to that. But I will record now and we'll get the rest of this with our wonderful guests and their answers to your questions. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. I can recreate that later if you want. Okay, so here are some tips on Zoom nonverbals. So earlier we talked about the different levels of nonverbals. On Zoom, it's important to remember that you're being watched. And this is the point at which that little light next to my camera, sometimes I wish it were a big bulb. So I always knew when that camera was on because it's really easy in a long meeting to forget about that. Um, so one of the things you can do is put a post-it note on your screen that nobody else can see, but you can see reminding you you're on camera or smile, you're on candid camera or whatever it is that's going to trigger you to remember that you're on camera. Those are good because this gets around, gets back to some of the things I'll mention later about uh, Zoom meetings are not the time for personal grooming. Things like that. So the next one is be mindful of your body language. I've seen people in meetings like this. Uh, you might as well be interrupting everybody to talk about how bored you are. Uh, another one is to put your phone down. Uh, this is not universal. I definitely use my phone in meetings, but be aware of it that you're doing that. Try to look into the camera like I'm trying even harder to do today, even though I wasn't recording. Um, Avoid excessive movements and dramatic hand gestures. Uh, <laughs> people have a tendency to shoo their kids away. <laughs> and it's really funny, like I, I've been, you know, in one of my graduate classes, somebody was doing that. And I, I always keep it on gallery view so I don't have to stare at myself while I'm talking. And uh, one of my students started shooing her kids away. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> like, it looks like the end of the world is happening. So just be aware that big gestures and movements draw the eye and uh, you're more likely to get seen when doing those and possibly disrupt the meeting. And then finally, be aware of your facial expressions. Uh, this is actually a really awesome thing that uh, Zoom does for us because we're having all of these meetings where our face is right there. We, if we have resting jerk face, we know, like we see it, it's right there. And we can learn over meetings how not to have resting jerk face, even if it's an awkward face of another time. So <laughs> use that, like use Zoom now to get a better sense of what your faces are like when you're just sitting quietly. But in particular, uh, if you have a tendency to make faces about you know, how your boss is uh, speaking, uh, be aware that your boss might see you do that now. So those are the tips for Zoom nonverbals. And I have some other tips, these are from Zoom, and these are more about how to using Zoom, etiquette and using Zoom. Make sure to introduce everyone at the beginning. I didn't introduce Carolyn, which I should have, but hopefully you all know Carolyn. Carolyn, it's good to have you here as well. <laughs> Thanks. I don't think I ever introduced you. I should do that. Yes, you um, do. <laughs> okay, good. Um, number two, ensure that you have a clean, work appropriate background. So today I put in some extra effort to have a really nice background and also um, bird courses for y'all. Look into the camera when talking instead of looking at yourself uh, or other things. Try to look into the camera. Eliminate distractions and focus on the agenda. Uh, this is actually, uh, like depending on context, uh, how you run meetings can vary. Uh, a lot of people said that it's a really good idea to have a little bit of pleasantries and talking about how people are doing and stuff in meetings. Um, so there's a balance there. Figure out what you need to build that positive group environment, that shared group feeling. 
Um, but don't let that go on too far. I've also heard lots of people complaining about, look, I have things to do. I don't want to spend 10 minutes talking about your homeschooling, right? So there's a balance there. And some people are jerks, so you remember that too. Um, be aware of your audio and video settings. Uh, all of us are getting crash courses and managing that. Only invite meeting participants who need to be there. This is a very important general rule of meetings, but it's also true in Zoom. And one of the things that you can do with Zoom that's so different from other meetings is you can thank somebody for being there for 10 minutes and they can immediately get back to work on other things. So we don't even have to run meetings the same way we used to run meetings. We can have the beginning of the meeting be one thing, the middle of the meeting be another, and the end of the meeting be another, much more easily than we've been able to do in the past. And then finally, if you're the host, stick around. Uh, good teachers know that the 10 minutes before and after class are the most important minutes that you teach. And it's also true in meetings if you're able to hang around so that anybody who was involved in the meeting gets there early or stays late is able to uh, to talk to you about that. I actually broke that today. I got here with like three minutes to go. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so other video conferencing tips. Don't eat. It can be really distracting if one person's sitting there chowing down while everyone else is, although you have the option of turning off video. Uh, don't sit too close or too far. Uh, there's been some really interesting writing being done recently about how people who don't see the screen well or hear very well get really close and they start to come across as very intimidating to their coworkers. So figure out what you need to do to manage that. Limit multitasking. Uh, I always multitask in meetings, but I have a really good ability to like do email and listen to the meeting. And I find that my ability to do that with Zoom is much worse. So be aware of that. Um, be on time to Zoom meetings. There's literally no excuse anymore. It's loud for me. I don't know how that is. Loud bird. Yeah. This mockingbird is not happy about me sitting under this tree. Uh, they will attack me, so I am now that worried. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, with these meetings, it's actually even more important with Zoom meetings that we all get there on time, get started, and get done because we have so much less travel time. It's a lot easier for us to coordinate and get there on time. I mentioned this earlier no grooming. Zoom meetings are not the time to cut your toenails or pick your nose or brush your hair. Um, these are things that have been seen. Light in front of you, not behind you. This is uh, really important. I had to scoot around a couple of times out here so that y'all would get the light on my face. If it's behind me, all you see is the devil talking to you. It's backlit by fire. Okay. Watch the playback of your presentation style. This is another thing. Like if you are recording meetings, you now have the opportunity to go back and watch yourself in the third person as you conduct the meeting to get a sense of what can I work on? What can I do better? Uh, what do I do well? And then this is a nice tip. If you need energy, put your laptop up high and stand up to give the meeting. It'll energize you more to be standing. Also, if you have chronic pain or some other thing that, um, makes it better for you to stand up. Just plan that in the way you do your meetings. Okay, and with that, we will move to our guests. Carly has some tips for y'all on staying connected. Sorry, my mouse was being weird and it wasn't letting me unmute myself. So there you go, technology. Um, okay, so this is a really strange time in regards to staying connected with people. Um, I think both, um, staying connected to people outside of our homes and also for some of us staying connected in our homes. Um, I know my husband and I both work full time and we have two small children. And so we're constantly like not seeing each other during the day because we're tagging back and forth and okay, my Zoom meeting, okay, you take the kids, your Zoom meeting, you go do homeschool. So it can be even hard whether it's inside or outside the home right now because things are just different. Um, so number one, Good communication is really difficult for everybody. Um, you know, in our clinic, one of the number one reasons people come in, particularly couples, is to work on communication. That's what they always say. And so I think normally communication is really difficult for people. But now more than ever, because we're so virtual, we have to be good communicators because there's so much more that's getting in the way between 
us and the other person. Um, I love that Josh talked about how nonverbal communication is so important. And that's a big part of what we end up missing, whether it's in a little bit of a Zoom call or it's over the phone or we're just texting. Um, we're relying more on that than ever. And so um, one of the biggest pieces is understanding that you more than ever need to not make assumptions about what other people are saying or what they're hearing. You know, if you are confused by something that someone is saying as you're connecting with them, if you're confused about their facial expression or their tone, you have to have a, a certain level of confidence to be able to say, hey, you know, when I said that, I noticed this face you made, or when I said that, I noticed you got quieter, you know, what, what's going on there? Um, what's happening, um, you know, in regards to, are you feeling some certain way about that? And that can be really um, intimidating to have to say those things and do those things. But what's interesting is, is if you open up with those types of good communication, other people, you're setting the standard and other people will communicate in those ways with you. Um, Another way to have, you know, good communication with people is, is setting boundaries. Um, so it's important to be setting boundaries, not only with your time, um, but with yourself. You know, if you're having a rough time, if you're dealing with something and you need to take some space or you need to scoot back, you know, a communication that you were supposed to have. Um, I think everybody's in the same place right now and you have to figure out what's going on for you emotionally and play into that more than ever. I think in, in the chaos of um, days before now, you know, we were able to kind of push past a lot of those things, um, push past, you know, our feelings, distract ourselves with going different places and accomplishing different things. And a lot of people, even the ones that are the busiest, like, you know, my husband and I, who are working from home with our kids, we still have to stop and take time to really understand, like, you know what, I need some self-care right now. I need to take time for me, which kind of moves into our, our next point about taking time for yourself. Um, it's really difficult for us to look internally sometimes. Um, that's a struggle of just humans in general. We're really good at helping other people. We're really good at, at caring for others and we're, we're the worst at caring for ourselves. Um, even as a marriage and family therapist, I always talk about how I'm, I'm my worst client because you know I don't always practice what I preach and I know better. Um, but it's really about right now when we're, whether you're isolated and you're lonely and you're bored or the opposite of the spectrum, you're busier than you've ever been. And it's really, you know, you're trying to multitask, you know, being a teacher and homeschool and doing your work and trying to connect with others. No matter what, you have to take time to check in with yourself. Um, if that means taking five minutes to, you know, use my fav my family's favorite white lie, which is uh, mommy has to go use the restroom, which usually means mommy just needs to go lock the door. <laughs> um, but I like to use that white lie for my kids. Um, it doesn't mean they won't follow me always. But if you need to take five or 10 minutes to literally just remove yourself from a situation and take some deep breaths and calm yourself down um, and say like, what's going on? Why am I so upset? And sometimes the answer for why we're feeling the way we are is just because of the state of the world right now. And that's an okay reason. You know, it's okay to have different types of anxiety that maybe you didn't feel before or to have, you know, worries that you thought weren't a big deal for you popping back up. Um, this is really normal. So you need to um, take some time to connect with yourself and figure out what's going on. The other thing is, is self-compassion. Um, one of the things that people, you know, a lot of people that I've talked to are doing is they are spending more time on social media. And some of that's really, really positive and it's a way people are connecting. But in between all those moments, there's a lot of self-comparison to other people and what other people are doing and how they're doing. Um, and as we all know, or we should know, you know, everybody puts their best self forward and they make things look really awesome and easy. Um, and it makes it really difficult to not compare ourselves. So more than ever before, I think, you know, making sure that we're not defining our successes in our days by the successes of other people or what we're at least viewing as their successes. Um, you know, there's really no definition for success right now because we're in an unprecedented time. And so if your definition for a successful day is that you were able to stay calm you know, get some tasks done, maybe even take a nap because you didn't feel very great because you were just stressed. 
that's a great definition of success. Good for you. Um, now, of course, it's always a balance and you want to make sure you're accomplishing what you need to and you're not, you know, getting into where you're in a depressed state and you're spending all your time in your bed. But maybe if that's what you're struggling with, a successful day is defined as getting out of bed and doing one or two things that day, you know, so everybody's level of success right now is very different. And so making sure that you're being compassionate to yourself. And then the next tip that I have is actually kind of a fun tip because a lot of that is kind of like down in the dump, little Debbie Downer action. But virtual parties are really fun. Um, you know, it's something that you can do that's very different, but it's about, you know, taking time to where you schedule a, a virtual party with friends. Um, the, you know, the thing I do love about Zoom is you can all get on there together and have everybody come together, have, you know, bring snacks in front of you or drinks. Um, my husband and I like to go um, see live music, which we can't do now, <laughs> which we're missing out on several concerts this summer. Um, but instead, you know, we found some concerts that were streaming online. We put it up on our TV and we Zoom called a bunch of our friends and we all watched it together. Um, and it was different and it was strange. Um, it wasn't exactly the same as, as it was before, but can I tell you, it was a really, really fun time just being around other adults that are our friends um, and just, you know, chatting about what we're even watching on the live concert or the, not the live concert, the streaming concert on, on our TV right then. Um, so take time to do that. And I know that, again, it's difficult because when we're trying to balance everything and sometimes we're working more than we ever did before because we don't have those same boundaries, you have to create those boundaries for yourself. And if it's an evening and you find yourself still working and you've worked all day, stop working. You know, people are, I have found, you know, even in my department that, you know, everybody's being a lot more compassionate about us taking care of ourselves. Um, and so hopefully other departments are feeling that way too. Um, but, you know, no matter who you are, or what tasks you need to accomplish in that day, you have to take that time for yourself. So thanks. Great tips, Carly. And Carly prepared a handout that we're going to upload as well, which has more details about all of the things that she just talked about. Megan, do you have some resources you want to share with us? For sure. Um, so I work as the Director of Customer Relations for the Office of Information Technology. So I'm going to provide just a couple of tips or maybe answer some questions that people already have. One question we've gotten a lot is, can you use UA resources for personal use? So we are licensed to all have a Zoom account, and you definitely can use those for personal meetings. We don't want someone to go set up a personal Zoom account for, say, their church small group or meeting up with friends or something like that, and then accidentally use that personal account later for work when it's something sensitive that needs to be protected with a work-level account. So yes, you can use your UA resources for personal things. Uh, Zoom is great. Most of us have either a pro or a basic account. Um, you can tell what type of account you have by just in the Zoom application looking at your account settings there. Um, and so pro accounts can host meetings longer than 40 minutes. Basic accounts have a 40 minute max. So that's just um, a tip. Some people are like, why are my meetings cutting off after 40 minutes? Um, if you requested a Zoom account, way back when before we all started remote work chances are you have a pro account and then we had to issue so many accounts so quickly we issued a lot of basic accounts just to save on resources there but if you need to upgrade to a pro account uh, let us know and we can take care of that for you um a couple of other when it cuts tips, off yeah. at, and when it cuts off at 40 minutes they can just reconnect right you can just restart it yeah so if you don't host long meetings often and you don't mind it cutting off, then yeah, you can totally just restart the meeting there. Yep. Um, and most faculty automatically get a pro account because we know faculty are going to be hosting uh, classes and we want to make sure not to interrupt that. Um, we mentioned Zoom backgrounds. I put a link in the chat. So we've provided some UA Zoom backgrounds that you can use. Um, another tip that I'm loving right now is there's an, an it's called enhance your virtual features or something like that. So if you click the little arrow by the stop video button and then you click video settings, there's a little chat box that says touch up my appearance. If you check that box, it takes away these, it takes away this, it is great. <laughs> so if you walk away with nothing else today, enjoy that. Yep. Major. Hey, that there. doesn't work the same for everybody. When <laughs> I, when I tried it, 
I my I be, I, my head became a Charlie Brown head, like it turned a circular. It's a little bit like a Snapchat feature for sure. Yeah, like, it makes your eyes a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, so um, test it out maybe before a meeting and see if that's something that you want to use. Um, a couple of other things is that our Center for Instructional Technology is offering a ton of webinars right now. So if you want to know more about Zoom or any of the other technology support, check out cit.ua.edu and you can see a full list of all of the webinars there. And I'll make sure that we, you guys have that link also. Uh, we mentioned how hard it is to stay connected with coworkers right now. Uh, so working in the Office of Information Technology, we might be a little bit more comfortable with the tools available than some other offices. But what we're loving right now is Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is a lot like Slack, if you've ever used that, um, and every faculty and staff member has access to it. So to view it, you just go to portal.office.com, and you can log into your Microsoft account there and download Teams. I definitely encourage offices to start using this. So we use it, of course, for different, you can set up different channels and threads of conversation. We have more information about it on our website. And again, I'll make sure you guys have a link to that too. But um, for us, we have different work channels for different projects, but then we have a channel that's called the OIT break room. And so it's where people can go in and just chit chat and share information that you would normally have. So for us, we see that we're working very productive um, remotely and we're really enjoying it, but we're missing those casual conversations that we used to have in the hallway. So we created this OIT break room channel. And so there, um, just today, somebody posted an article, 10 movies you have to watch in quarantine or somebody posted a picture of all the yard work they did over the weekend just stuff like that that makes you feel connected to your coworkers and that we're all human we also have another one called oit fitness challenge i see prathima is in the webinar today and she's a rock star for in oit for the oit fitness challenge and we try and do a challenge every week um, last week was try a different exercise try something new you've never done before and post it here another one was get 30 minutes of activity every day and post it here. Um, so it's a good way just to stay connected with your coworkers. So those are two things that we're doing. And um, again, that tool is Microsoft Teams, and we're all loving it. So I encourage you guys to um, check that out. Megan, we have a question from somebody who's wondering um, about etiquette and not showing your face when you're in a meeting, um, not video. Is there any rules or advice you can give on that? Leah, like everything, it depends. Um, we're in this new normal and we're all figuring it out. But what I recommend is if you are the one speaking, then your video should be on. Um, and you can hide the mess behind you with a cool virtual background so no one has to know that pile of laundry that's back there. Mm -hmm. But when you are speaking, we encourage you to use the video. Um, sometimes when it's a huge group, you might turn your video off just to save on the bandwidth for everybody. Um, but if you're the one speaking, turn it on. And when you pop in the meeting, normally it's good to just hey Megan's here and then you can turn your video off if it's a huge meeting or something like that and I'll add that there were a whole lot Carly I'll let you speak in a second I'll add that there were a whole lot of tips for bosses or people who are supervising other people right now that I didn't include in this but um, we can put a couple of links together for you if you're interested in that um, but one of them is you should always be making it clear before the meeting what your expectation is for the level of that meeting so if people are expecting it to be a quick audio meeting and then you get into the meeting and ask everyone to turn their cameras on, that's actually poor etiquette for the meeting leader. Uh, for most of the work meetings, we, we tend to have an expectation for video, but for smaller meetings, that's just up to folks. So that's a good thing to think about. Uh, some of the other tips were uh, it's a lot easier to micromanage people now because you can be trying to like find out everything about what they're doing and that doesn't work. Use other performance metrics of their work so that you're not trying to micromanage them. Um, and then on the other side of that, well, I'll stop so Carla can talk. Go ahead, Carla. No, no, you're fine. I was just gonna say, um, it can be used in a really proper way too. If you're in a meeting and one of your children runs in or if something, you know, you have to jump up for a second. I know I've, even in the middle of class, you know, my two-year-old found her way randomly in, and started crying. And so, you know, to just 
stop for a second or if you're not speaking, you know, turn your video off really quick as to not let everybody have to see the distraction that's happening. Um, so using it, you know, Josh talked earlier about, you know, if you're shooing your kids or something's going on, it does get really distracting. And so just quickly hit that stop video button, continue to be involved in the meeting by listening, but then nobody has to see that distraction. That's a lot less distracting. So uh, I'll also add to that, that one of the, one of the things, one of the challenges that's really hard is maintaining these personal connections and our team connections. And one of the things that I think is really great about this new setup is I have met many of my coworkers' children now when I hadn't really before because they walked in the room and then they were like, oh, come meet Josh. And so then even though it's mediated, I'm meeting them and I'm seeing their living spaces and their like outdoor spaces. And so while that's a good thing because it builds connection, it can also feel intrusive. So being aware of how you feel about that and where you come down on that is important. Thanks, Fatima. Is that how you say it, Fatima? Thank you for the question and the compliment. Other questions? Um, I have, we got a question earlier that we already quasi answered. Um, and I'm forgetting where it came from, who it came from. Uh, but it was a question about, um, lots of us had standing social engagements. Like I have a happy hour every Friday that I love going to. And uh, I've said for years that it's one of my favorite hours in the week. It's just like I hang out with emeritus professors and colleagues and you know spouses and you know friends from the community it's just this wonderful thing and of course like died completely several months ago so it's really hard to figure out how to handle that sort of thing what my friends and i did was we created a zoom happy hour we actually just replaced it and so now we sit with a beer and we chat with each other and this is not a new idea <laughs> a lot of people are doing it and there's some links there with some tips on how to throw your own and this is a published image so i don't feel bad showing it and i did not show a screenshot of my friends in happy hour because i didn't have time to get all of their permissions um, but it's it's something that actually worked out really well for us even though it's very different like one of the things that's awesome about happy hours is you can be talking to the group and then you can just talk to one person for 20 minutes and zoom is not great for that that's hard to accomplish with zoom uh, one of the things that i'd like to do in the next few weeks is learn how to use breakout rooms a little better so i can just grab a friend and say hey let's go talk about that in a breakout room and then come back but i haven't no learned how to do that yet so i think there are ways to sort of like help approximate that um, so, but that's the downside. The good side is I'm seeing all these people I care about. I'm seeing their faces. They're telling me about how their week's going. Um, one of the other problems is when people get there late and they ask questions and then the information gets repeated. So it can be an understanding that everybody gets there at the same time. So all the check-ins happen one time so that you don't have that conversation that repeats three or four times. I turned it out to be less interesting because I would hone my jokes over the course of happy hour with different friends. So by the end of happy hour, it was much better than at the beginning. I can't do that anymore. So now I just give people information about COVID-19, which is not my information. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be, that would be my um, advice is, uh, and Carly said this too, like be intentional, reach out to people that you miss, that you care about, schedule a phone meeting a skype meeting a zoom meeting and catch up it's like we're all in the same boat this is like a work party right everyone has to go there find someone to talk to kill an hour and a half you can go home right when you're missing people we're all going through the same stuff we all miss people the first few minutes can be awkward and then you settle in and it's fine and after a little bit of doing it it's not even like hard to do anymore so that's my advice about that. Do y'all have advice to share, Megan, Carly, about that? Um, we've actually, it's interesting because we started 
doing so much just zooming with everybody we've reconnected with people that live you know across the country even and we're hanging out with them more than we ever used to just because this is becoming such a normal thing um so i i just challenge people to think about that as well you know if there's friends you haven't seen or really don't typically talk to in a while set up a zoom meeting it's super easy to do and and all of the the pairs of friends that that we've the couple friends we've done this with they're like why haven't we done this before <laughs> you know what I mean? like, why haven't we reconnected like this we live across the country and um and so you know do it with your your neighbor do it with you know anybody from from your walk different walks of life um it can be really a fun time yeah i have a a close group of friends from about five years ago and they all left they're in nebraska and michigan and all over the place and we one time got together because it had been a few years since we talked and we had that meeting, but it felt weird, but it was awesome to see everybody. And then since this started, we're all like, hey, let's get together again. Because it's like yeah. just as easy to hang out now with people on the other side of the country as it is to hang out with somebody down the block. Yeah. Me? Cool. Yeah, I've had similar experiences. A group of my sorority sisters from 10 years ago, we're now getting together and we haven't done that in years. So that's a lot of fun. But my piece of advice is don't let it fall off. So in the beginning, it was kind of exciting and let's schedule all these meetings and have these happy hours. And then we kind of, or maybe I'm just speaking for myself, it kind of fell into a lull, like, oh my gosh, I'm just ready to get back to normal. But mm -hmm. keep yourself motivated and keep reaching out to people. Um, you know, some people are posting pictures like day 47 of quarantine. It's like, I've lost count. I don't know what they oh, yeah. anymore. <laughs> so continue to reach out to people and know that you have all these tools that are available. So, um, Zoom is great for large meetings, I think. Microsoft Teams is a good one for just your group with it that you work with every day. Of course, FaceTime is great for just a couple. You've got a lot of options out there, so test them and see what works for you in each different scenario. And know that um, all these things are listed on our website, oit.ua.edu, and you can always get more information there. So um, I don't see any questions in the chat, but I did have one I wanted to ask y'all. One of the things I ran across is that some people feel a lot of pressure around feeling like um, they're doing enough to satisfy their boss because right now their boss can't see that they're working eight hours a day. So how do how do you well, what suggestions do you all have for managing that? You broke up just a little bit. Can oh, what questions? suggestions do you have for managing that? Um, that both the reality of how do you report to your boss about what you're doing and how do you manage the anxiety of feeling like you have to prove that you've been working. Yeah, I think it's a lot about the culture of the organization. Um, an employee that reports to me has a two-year-old and she's just doing what she can to get by, you know. Um, her husband's at work and so she's got a two-year-old at home, so she's not going to be at her desk all day, every day. So it's just about setting the environment and setting expectations. Like, yes, we have this project. The due date is May 15th. Whatever we can do to get it done by May 15th. If that means you can do a little bit in the morning and then go outside with him, have lunch, have a picnic, and then come back you know just setting the standard of being flexible um, and I think that's just goes back to keeping open lines of communication hey didn't get as much done as I wanted to today hopefully tomorrow will be better you know just being able to have those kinds of candid conversations and making sure that expectations are clear yeah and and I know it's hard because you know some you're closer to some people are closer to their boss than others and some people have a more casual relationship than others but i think no matter what across the board i think you know our bosses need to know what our what our life looks like right now because you know i think we could have we you know when we before pandemic we kind of assumed you know okay you have kids but they go to school and your your life is just like mine and you know everything else but i think nowadays we can't make that assumption of, of what everybody is trying to take on in their homes right now and so you know one of the things that's been helpful with like our department chair is is i know he knows you know i've communicated to him like what's going on you know like we're both working from home I'm trying to homeschool a first grader. I'm, you know, I have a two year old that's running around crazy. Like, it, you know, I'm just doing what I can. And so even if I think you're, you're a little hesitant to go to like a more of a personal level with your boss, it doesn't have to get that personal to just say, hey, you know, here are the things I'm juggling right now and I'm trying to, you know, do the best I can. Even just saying, do you have any suggestions of better ways for me to balance? 
Um, you know, letting your boss know that you're trying to balance it the best you can and you're open to suggestion um, can be really helpful in just communicating that like, hey, I'm trying to work as hard as I can right now. Yeah, and if I can add to that, we sent out a survey to our organization. So we have about 180 or so employees in OIT. And so we sent out an organization-wide survey and we had a great response rate. And we just asked, how are you feeling? Um, just mentally, emotionally, what might inhibit you from performing at the same level that you normally would? Um, and just had drop down options. I'm a caregiver, I'm sick, or I don't have the internet connection I need to. And so we sent that survey out. Um, most of our employees are loving remote work because we have a lot of uh, technical introverts in our office, believe it or not. Um, so they're pretty happy, but we were able to get feedback from them and they didn't have to tie their name to it if they didn't want to. Um, but if there was a need, they had an opportunity to provide it in an anonymous way um, so that we could work to provide that provide for that need if we needed to. Um, so again, a lot of our employees were loving the work from home and we sent that survey out um, I think April 10th. And so we plan to do it again next week, a month into it uh, later and seeing, okay, where are, where's everybody at now? What do we need to change to make sure people feel connected? Do they have the tools that they need? And just um, checking in. We've also had our CIO send out video updates. And um, I've seen a lot of colleges doing that. Chuck Carr from engineering is posting videos of him and his dogs out on walks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think people are using this opportunity, even though we're distant, um, to show a little bit more of themselves. And that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It is good. Yeah, and you uh, forecast, checking for questions again, you forecast uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask y'all because um, I actually am very social and good at um, social performing, as y'all know from me hosting this, but uh, I'm actually really introverted and nobody ever expects that. So uh, I saw these articles that were really hilarious when they started, like introverts are finally getting the world they want. You know? <laughs> and I felt that in some ways, like this, like my job is like much more like I would want now than it is normal. So what are some suggestions y'all have for dealing with the different stresses of being an introvert, being an extrovert and dealing with the, the way things have changed? Um, I think number one is figure out what it is you need. Um, because I think even even introverts, you know, they're going to still be extra isolated than ever before. Um, and, and, you know, I've talked to a lot of my students, um, you know, my, I teach graduate students and, and, you know, they're just like super lethargic and bored, you know what I mean? Because they've done every craft and watched every Netflix. I mean, you know, there's those funny memes about like, I finished Netflix, you know, so um, <laughs> I think number one, like figuring out what is it that you're missing? You know, is it that I'm missing something productive if I'm an introvert, but I don't feel like I'm being productive? Okay, cool. If it, you're an extrovert and you're missing, you know, social connection, okay, what can I do to increase that? So I think identify the need that you're missing, which I think in and of itself is a difficult process sometimes, um, but really kind of looking internally and going, you know, what is it that, that would make me feel better right now? And then reaching out and, and asking for help in that, you know, if it's something like, I don't feel like I'm being productive, I don't feel like I'm giving back, you know, do some research, see what you can do. Um, you know, if you can't sew some masks, maybe you can donate to, you know, food to the, um, you know, a, a shelter or something. So I think just figuring out what you need is the biggest step first. And then, you know, reaching out and asking for some ideas from people on how to fill that Do you have anything to add, Megan? Yeah, no, I mean, I love that. And just um, who have I, who would I have normally talked to this week that I haven't heard from? Who can I just send a text of encouragement, even if it's just a wave emoji? Um, so di like I said, different coworkers that you would normally maybe not work with every day, so you're not emailing them, but you would normally fill up your water bottle at the same place or microwave your lean cuisine at the same time. Um, just drop in a note and check on people and stay connected that way. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to learn about comic selfies. Like, this is a good time. So, like, this is me with, like, my coffee cup, like, missing coffee with you in the morning, right? Like, that's a very simple thing, but it's a really warm thing to do. And we got nothing better to do. We might as well learn it now. <laughs> and on that topic, um, since there are still no more questions, uh, I had another question. Uh, one of the things that occurred to me two weeks ago was that there are all of these professional trainings I would normally want to do, but they don't really come to Alabama. 
but now nobody can go to them. So I started looking online to see which ones had moved online so that now I can get these certifications that I couldn't get here or, you know, without spending $2,500 to travel up to New York or whatever to do it. Um, so what advice do y'all have for people who want to take advantage of this time in some way, either for personal growth? Carly, it was actually a mindfulness training that I was thinking about. So for personal growth or Megan for professional training. Um, I think, you know, either, either one, but I think definitely just knowing that there are a lot of webinars and there's actually a lot more free webinars. People are being really compassionate with their ability to share knowledge right now. Um, you know, people are really willing to give knowledge out knowing that people are struggling probably as a way for them to be productive and give back. Um, and so, you know, finding, you know, even just, you know, Googling if there's a topic you're interested in, um, I know that there's, you know, depending on what, you know, your career, you know, organization is, your department is, um, you know, I know that they're sending out like listservs of different, you know, trainings you can do and things like that, but just get out there and do some research um, and see what's available. Um, if there's not free webinars, a lot of them are also being discounted right now just because, you know, everybody's kind of stuck at home and they're wanting everybody to, to connect. Um, so doing some research, figuring out what you want to do, um, it plays into with the personal growth piece for me, it plays into making your time in self care productive. Um, I think, you know, it was something I didn't mention earlier, but I think, you know, if you do take 10 minutes or, you know, use the excuse, I need to go to the other room, right? You know, don't spend your time on Facebook comparing yourself to everybody else. Like that's not going to be productive for you. It's, it's okay to use Facebook and it's okay to use Instagram, but if you're finding that it's not making you feel better, then, then stop it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that therapist is like, don't do it. Stop, you know, don't do it. <laughs> but really like stop doing that and, and spend some time going like, you know what, I have, you know, a day off, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could find some training and so do some research and, and spend that time in self-care in a productive way for yourself. Yeah, and our UA LMS has a ton of resources in there. So we have a partnership with LinkedIn Learning and there is, endless resources on that website. We have some um, for cybersecurity awareness, which you know is completely riveting, right? Um, but there are so many things out there that you can learn how to use and learn these new tools and come back to your office. Um, way more comfortable with technology than you ever were before. And, um, you know, you see all these memes on the internet, like I plan to learn a new language and read a book a day and do all these things during quarantine. And here I am still streaming on Netflix. So mm -hmm. set realistic goals for yourself. I'm going to do one training a week and that's going to happen on a Wednesday morning or do something that you can actually check off. Um, but I definitely encourage people to check out the UA LMS and the LinkedIn learning through there because there are so many resources that are readily available to us. Awesome. Any other questions or comments? Oh, I will add that we have a great resource page that has a lot of these links to some of the suggestions that you had um, just at the on the wellness website. Um, and then anything that you guys would like for me to post, which Carly, I did have your tips that I put on our resource page that's connected to the webinar recording. So I can put anything up for you that people can have access to. And I've been making notes about the websites that we've been following. Okay, good. good. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Carly, so much for being here. Thank you, Carolyn, for helping thank us organize you. all of this. And thank all of you for joining us and asking your questions. I will see all. You see back there the, the menu for upcoming ones, menu the schedule for upcoming Let's Talks. Uh, so I look forward to seeing y'all some of those. Have a great week. Hey. Stay well. Bye, guys.